In this video we're going to be covering some of the additional pages in Mock and what their screens are used for. We've already discussed the main page here. Um, we're going to be discussing these uh, five pages here. First off, we'll start with the MDI or Manual Data Input window. Um, generally I don't use this too often. Um, in here is where you can write lines of G code and enter it and have the machine run it manually. Um, so I don't use this screen too often. It has some of the other fish features of the other screens. Um, same tools path to wet display. Um, same feed rate settings. Um, but generally I don't use this. You're not going to be using this screen. Uh, the next one is the tool path. Um, this is just a larger version of the current toolpath. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to see what's going on when you're kind of trying to scroll through to find a position or find out where you want to either uh, start a cut or um, continue a cut, say where you left off or rewind the program a little bit. Um, has same features as the main page. One thing, it, two that it does have uh, that the other page doesn't have, it has this single block mode that you can set it in. It will allow the, the machine to run in a single, each individual line. If I keep hitting the start button, the machine will run through each individual line. Um, sometimes it's handy to have this to be able to see and um, figure out where in the g-code you're having a problem um, so I'll talk about using that in different methods but if that lights blinking it's in that mode so you generally want to make sure it's off um, now this reverse run will run your program backwards um, I don't recommend you use this setting because I don't have a whole lot of luck with it. It tends to be a little bit quirky. There are better ways to rewind your program if you have to stop from, say, a tip up or an error or your consumables have worn out. Um, for any reasons, we'll be discussing that in later videos. Um, really, the one, the most useful part about this screen is this program limits here. Now, if I were to, say, be cutting this uh, tag feature out of a small piece of material, say I measured my material out and I realized it was, say, 20 inches by 6 inches. And I know this is roughly about the same size, so I'm a little bit concerned that I might run off the plate. A lot of times what I'll do is go to this window, and this shows me the program limits. This is going to show me how far the, the X and Y axes are going to move, positive and negative. So from the start position over here, it's showing me the X is going to move 19.1 inches over to this side of the cut. And the Y axis will move a maximum of 5.25 inches from this side of the cut. So with my piece of material on there, I can then measure the plate compare it to these measurements and I'll know whether or not my part is going to cut out correctly or if the torch is going to run off the edge of the plate before it's finished cutting. So, Moving on to the settings page. Um, the f there's only a few things on here you're going to have to worry about. The first is, uh, and generally once these are set you're not going to mess with them, your THC corrections. This is how high or how low the torch height control can correct the z-axis to compensate for warpage in the plate. Um, so right now it's set to do a maximum of one inch above what's considered zero point and one inch below. Um, if you were to be in the situation of cutting something that was really warped, that was warped more than one inch, um, you're going to have to make uh, corrections. You're going to have to adjust these settings. But generally, you're going to leave them right where they are. Okay, anti-dive. Um, it's the percentage of your tool path speed um, below which the torch height control is ignored. Um, 
So right now it's set at 60. 60 generally is a good speed for this. Um, now if you're um, moving, say your torch height control, say your <clears throat> basically what this does is it prevents the torch from diving when it's coming up to sharp corners where the machine has to slow down and then speed back up. That slowdown and speed can increase the voltage and the torch height control will want to move down the torch to compensate, which is what you don't want to happen because it will dive into the plate. So what this is saying is if the machine is moving at less than 60% of the programmed um, velocity or program inches per minute for the program, the mock will ignore your torch height control movements, basically. Um, generally, I leave it on and I leave it set at 60. Now, if I were in a situation where I was really slowing down the machine, I might have to adjust this, but generally 60 is going to be fine. Um, your THC rate, <coughs> this is the rate at which Basically what this is, this is a percentage of your z-axis speed that the torch height control is allowed to move at. Usually I have this set to about 15 or so. So that means your torch height control rate is a maximum of 150 inches a minute um, set from the factory. And so it's set to move at 15% of that. So the torch height control can't move faster than 15% of 150 inches a minute. Um, the reason you keep it uh, low is that if you set this too high, you'll get what happens, what's called oscillation, where your machine, your torch height control will say command, say your voltage is too high. The torch height control will command that mock lower the z-axis to compensate and what happens is there's a slight delay in that loop such that the, the if the THC moves the, the torch too quickly it can overshoot the position that it needed to be at and so then it'll say well the voltage is too high raise the torch it's too low lower the torch raise the torch and so it it'll start jumping up and down vibrating very quickly the torch height control your z-axis it's going to give you a sawtooth type cut and um, you don't want that so but I generally find about 15 percent with our particular motor and our particular speed settings um, is a good place to leave it if you you can start messing with this but um, if you start to see oscillation you're going to have to either one decrease the the z-axis maximum um, feed rate or um, the motor speed or lower this THC rate um, and then these are your, car, your stored cut settings um, this is another spot it displays it um, I'll talk about these in more in depth in a later video. So, um, your torch height control delay. This is Mox torch height control delay. Generally, um, I leave it at one second because um, usually I'm delaying my torch height control more than one second by using a separate THC delay, which is located in your cut profile, and it's shown right there. Usually, I'll have this up at say. Uh, 2.5 to 2 in 2 seconds for my torch height control delay. Um, but so usually you don't mess with this. Uh, moving over here, really the only thing you're going to be doing here is looking at these two windows. I remember I talked about the load load material button that is over on the program run right here. This is where the position for the load material button is set. Um, so basically from your absolute machine zero you would decide okay I want the D 
the anterior to be at the far back end of the machine and I want my z-axis far over to the right and I want my z-axis to be at this level uh, say two inches above or say so let's say that was a um, you know you have a five foot machine your position is going to be 60 inches um, positive and your Y position is going to be oh, I forgot to hit enter 60 inches positive and it's going to be 60 inches positive for the Z for, or for the Y and then we'll set the Z axis to 2 inches now one thing to remember is that you always have to have a Z axis position set in here um, so if I'm over on, if I have um, uh, <coughs> referenced out my Y and my X axis over at my machine zero, um, the Z axis is always going to move up two inches from its current position, okay, to plus two. Um, so that's one thing to note. Sometimes you can run it if your Z axis is in a weird position when you zero out you don't zero out the z-axis which you normally don't um, then you may have problems using this uh, material load uh, button but generally it's I don't use it too often but this is where the setting is if you want to mess with it um, and the second is setting your reference point um, this is how you set you get back re you recover from errors um, and you can basically set a reference point from say machine zero so if I had um, uh, um, referenced out my X and my Y at my machine zero and we'll talk about this in a later video this is where I set my reference point when I move to what would I call would call my part zero um, and that's a little confusing right now but it'll be explained later so offsets you're not going to be messing with this this is really strictly for milling um, your diagnostics page this has a lot of information on it this is going to show you um, has a lot of the same features that are on the first page just with a little bit more detail um, really there's a lot on here what you're going to really be interested in looking at mainly on this screen is um, this is going to show you your input status it's going to show you if any of your home switches are thrown so if you ever have a problem with your home switch you can test it out here you can go on to this screen and then start clicking your home switches and these switches these LEDs will light up and but the main actual reason to go to this screen is going to be your jog control Okay, there's two modes in your jog control: the continuous and there's step mode. Okay, so generally when you're jogging continuously, you're going to want to have it in this mode. And basically, when I press one of my arrow keys, it will jog as long as I have the arrow key depressed. Okay. Now, if I switch it over to step mode, then it will jog a certain distance. So if I want it to jog one inch. I can put I can type in one here up here this step and now when I press my my arrows whether it be the X moving the X Y or Z axis the axis will move one inch in the direction that I press the arrow to go um, this is handy for a number of reasons um, say I know my part is 25 inches long and I want to make sure that I have enough room on my plate to cut it out I could type in 25 and then hit my jog button and my axis will jog exactly 25 inches and I can look and see am I still on the plate or have I gone off the plate so but generally you're gonna leave it in continuous jog mode okay um, if you do use the step mode to move around make sure that you switch back to continuous mode okay because you will stay in step mode until you switch back and 
it can be problematic if you've moved it and then you go back to your program run page run your file and then you try to start jogging around and all of a sudden your jog wants to go 25 inches instead of being in continuous mode um, so those are the main pages in mock that you're going to be using there are additional features up here I am not going to be going over these um, I recommend you read the Mach 3 manual. These a lot of configuration into the settings. I do not recommend that you change any of these. These are all set at the factory. Um, but as you get more of an expert on Mach, if you want to, you can go in and change these settings. However, I do not recommend it, and I may have it may cause you problems. And it may be difficult to troubleshoot your problems if you have started changing these settings. So that's your general overview of Mach. And um, now we'll move on to uh, addressing powering up the machine and how to start running it.